Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get things started here for the Take Back the Dream Rally with the Tuna Luska Choir. We've got some great luck to you. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank <laughs> you. 
We really need you to come and sit down and fill all the seats. You can sit in the aisles too if you'd like. A little bit. Come on, folks. Sit on the side. There's some seats down here. Three right here. There's two over here. There's others over here. We need you to come in and fill the seats so we can make more space for folks coming in late in the back. Simultaneously around North Carolina, 13 events are happening right now. Taking the green road, forward together, movement marches all across the state of North Carolina. This rally and all the 13 others around North Carolina honor what Dr. King said and did in all of his life and work. Not only one day, though also the inspiration of that day. 50 years later, we are here now. Taking the dream that Dr. King spoke of back home, back home to Boone and to the high country. It's a call to service. It is a call to action. You will be leaving here with things to do to take this forward, not one step back. Not one step back. Forward, not one step back. Forward. In regards to what has been happening in Raleigh, much of the current le legislation has been against what Dr. King hoped for, what he worked for, and what those who gather around him in that civil rights movement and then the continuing rights movement have worked for for years. It is against that. It is important for us to get mobilized to restore Section 4 of the Voting Rights Act. <laughs> Volunteers to be a delegation to go talk to our legislators in Congress, including Congresswoman Virginia Fox and her colleagues. No, no, no. We love the person. We just don't care for the actions they've been taking. Keep it, keep it positive. We've got the high ground, and we're going to keep that. We can also organize to volunteer as a delegation to talk to all of our local legislators. A little housekeeping. Folks with the yellow hats, yellow shirts are here to help organize. And if you need anything, please check in with them at any time during today's event. Organizers are requesting that there be no petitions of any kind circulated today. This isn't what we're here about today. We're here to get that energy going. It's about getting empowered for the movement. There will be lots of opportunity for signing petitions and many other action steps as this movement continues. Today and tomorrow, we can all constantly and clearly inform our communities about how much the recent legislation is working against the dream. We want everybody here to remember, we're taking the dream back home. Forward together, not one step back. Forward together, not one step back. Forward together, not one step back. I'm going to ask my friend Elaine. Rothenberg to come and join me. She represents uh, or is from the Boone Jewish community and we're going to begin this afternoon with the litany and y'all are going to have a part in this. After I say something to begin with or Elaine says something, you will repeat, God of justice, have mercy. Let's practice that. God of justice, have mercy. Y'all sound great. Then a little bit after about six of those, you're going to switch to what we just said. Forward together, not one step back. I'll clue you in. Let's share in this litany. God of justice, the hearer of the cries of the oppressed, this is what we are experiencing. Our North Carolina legislators have enacted policies that take away our voting rights. To this we say, God of justice, have mercy. They have wounded all North Carolinians by refusing to accept the resources that provide health care to all citizens of North Carolina. To that we say, God of justice, have mercy. 
They have infringed upon the rights of women by enacting laws that promote abortion restrictions. To that we say, God of justice, have mercy. They have turned their eyes away from the most vulnerable by slashing the, the budgets of public education. To that we say, God of justice, have mercy. They have hurt thousands of North Carolina families by unnecessarily cutting unemployment benefits. To that we say, God of justice, have mercy. To every legislator who voted for a law, a policy, or a bill that will bring harm to even one North Carolinian, we the people say, God of justice, have mercy. Now we got the new uh, response forward together, not one step back. We the people still believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. We believe that right temporarily defeated is stronger than evil triumphant. And so we say together, forward together, not one step back. We, the people, still believe that what self-centered people have torn down, other-centered people can build up. And so we say together, Forward together, not one step back. We, the people, still believe that people everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture for their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits. And so we say together, we, the people of North Carolina, are a people resolved to fight, to fight, to fight until there is justice for all. We, the people of North Carolina, are a persistent people, and we will not rest until every North Carolinian's constitutional rights are protected. We, the people of North Carolina, are a people of hope, and we will stand together to restore our state leadership into the hands of those who seek justice for all. We, the people, say, for together, not one step back. We're going to have audio remarks on the screen over here, or around the, on the sound system, from the Reverend William Barber, president of the North Carolina NAACP. We know what the folks say. In Isaiah 58, the book says, this is the kind of fast that I declare. Not that you simply pretend you worship. But if you want to know what God is interested in, break the chains of injustice. Get rid of exploitation in the workplace. Free the oppressed. Cancel the debt. Share your food with the hungry. And hide the homeless in your house. Put clothes on the naked. Do this and the lights will turn on. Do this and your nation will turn around. Do this and righteousness will prepare your way. Do this and God will hear your prayer. Do this and you shall be called the parents of the breach. Do this and when you call, God will answer. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, black and white and Latino and people of faith and Asian and Native American and straight and gay and all of you who are out here. It's our time for the soul and destiny of our state. It's our time to say no. It's our time to say no to injustice. It's our time to declare that the bell way. It's our time to demand we do right by workers. It's our time to lift the poor. It's our time to protect our children. It's our time to defend voting rights. It's our time to stand up the panel. It's our time to speak truth to power. It's our
of the Declaration of Independence. He said this was a promissory note to every American. He said this is a guarantee to all the inalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But then he noted America has defaulted on this promissory note for people of color. He said, in essence, America has given its colored people a bad check, a check that has come back marked insufficient funds. But hopefully, he said, one day, since the Bank of Justice is not bankrupt, we will cash this check. And cash it they did, cash it we did, cash it you did, through hard work, determination, sweat, tears, blood, to cash that check, many people paid for it with their lives. And we remember you today. Other acts of civil disobedience, often at the barrels of guns, confronted by the novels of water hoses at the ends of batons, or facing the sharp teeth of police dogs, even facing down racist mayors, governors, lawmakers, white citizens' councils, but also through the courts and through the ballot box. The people earn their rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They earn their rights to equal justice and equal protection under the law. And they earn their right to vote, even to vote for a black president. <laughs> yes. We the people, we the people eliminated separate but equal. We eliminated whites only signs. We killed Jim Crow. And we've made a lot of progress. But the nature of this progress has been gradual and has been incomplete because it tends to occur like this. Two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back. The two steps forward are because of people like you. Progressives, people who believe in progress, justice, equality, and who dare to dream. The one step backward is because of those who don't believe in the dream. Those who are afraid of progress. Those who are vested in the status quo. And it, it, also, it also is because of structural barriers that unfortunately, as we now know, reach all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. So we're not there yet. If you want evidence, look at the recent ruling by the court striking down a key provision of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. To paraphrase the Chief Justice John Roberts, our country's changed. Forty-year-old facts have no logical relationship to the present day. Legislation must speak to current conditions. Congress can't rely on the past. Rely on the past. As if there's no evidence that discrimination in voting still exists in the present day and the current conditions. How about Shelby County, Alabama, the very place that challenged the voting rights to the court, the Voting Rights Act? 77% of the people there voted for the white guy. How about that since that ruling, nine states, including North Carolina, have passed voter ID laws? Ours is called one of the worst voter suppression laws in the past six decades. Or how about right here, right here in Watauga County? where our election board can buy three precincts into a massive new one. One that has 9,000 voters and only 28 parking spaces. 
One that's a 17 minute walk from campus with no sidewalks and no bus service. How about moving another precinct to a different location? How about limiting early voting? How about closing the precinct on Appalachian State University? <laughs> who, who will these acts hurt? Young people, old people, poor people, women, people of color. So now here in this place, it's two steps forward, three steps back. Two steps forward, three steps back. You know, I'm pretty sure that on the night of the election, 2012, November, when I went to bed, I went to bed in the 21st century. I went to bed knowing that our nation had changed. I knew that we had progressed. When I, that night when I looked in on my children, my beautiful children, snuggled safely in their beds, I thought, what a tremendous joy it is to know that my children live in a time where seeing a black family, a beautiful black family in the White House is just normal. But sometimes... But sometime over the course of the next summer months, I traveled back to the 20th century, and so did you. In fact, I'm pretty sure that by the morning of July 26, 2013, the end of the first session of the General Assembly here, I was squarely in the 20th century. And so are you, as best I can tell, it's about 1963. John Lewis said, the famous John Lewis said, the Supreme Court will not take away my right to vote. That was in 1963. In the span of only half a year, legislators, elections officials, and the Supreme Court has taken us back to 1963, a time when it was okay to restrict voting rights and deny people their right to vote entirely. Two steps forward, three steps back. Well, as Dr. King said so eloquently 50 years ago, I have a dream. And I stand before you today to say I, too, have a dream. But it's not just a dream about racial equality or living in a colorblind society. It's a dream where I imagine that I'll soon wake up from this dream, this nightmare, safely back in the 21st century. It's a dream that, in the words of Maya Angelou, we can believe that the day will come when we do not have to be saddled, when we do not have to be crippled with all of this idiocy. Of course I want to see Dr. King's dream for all realized, but what I really dream now is that a resemblance of freedom will return to my beloved town of Boone, to Watauga County, and to the state of North Carolina, so that we can get back to walking forward without looking back. Two steps forward, no steps back. Moral Monday protests will grow into Moral Tuesday, Moral Wednesday, Moral Thursday, Moral Friday, Moral Saturday, and yes, Moral Sunday protests. But that we will get back to the 21st century. I have a dream that we will finally be able to rid ourselves of the ridiculous notions that states are free to do whatever they like, regardless of federal law. Two steps forward, no steps back. In conclusion, I have a dream that we will return safely to the 21st century. 21st century where we value liberty, equality, and happiness for all, where it's easy for everyone to vote because of the struggles and sacrifices for those who came before us. Two steps forward, no steps back. Here's what we're going to do. Get on our feet. Take to the streets. Vote. Register others to vote. Get them to the polls. Get on our feet. Take to the streets. Vote. Register others to vote. Get to the polls. Two steps forward, no steps back. Thank you. 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 Ms. Jennifer Lacey, a good friend of mine, she's a teacher at Parkway School and is local NCAE president. Come on up, Jennifer. Education is the foundation for our future, the key to unlocking dreams and turning them into reality. Welcome. My name is Jennifer Lacey. I am a daughter and a wife of hardworking small business owners here in Boone. I am an alumnus of Watauga County Schools and Appalachian State University. I am a mother to two boys receiving a top-notch public education at Parkway School, where I am a fourth grade teacher. <laughs> North 
Carolina Association of Educators president. But most importantly, I am an active, proud voter in North Carolina. I want to make a change. Public education in North Carolina is going strong despite titanic losses in funding, support, and recognition from our state government 